الحمد لله وكفى السلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى Yesterday we spoke a little bit about the concept of Zuhad, the ability to renounce and the ability to abstain from certain things, to leave certain attachments, certain connections that are related to the dunya and everything and everyone in the dunya. And we understood it that this is something that is a prerequisite on the path, on the spiritual path, what we call the tariq or suluq, that one must attain this. Something related to zuhud is known as wara, which we can translate to, you know, being careful, being cautious, being conscientious, you know, piety, extreme piety. Um, and this is also a kafiya of the heart, you know, the maqam of a wara. You can call it a maqam, but it's really the development, the nourishment of the heart to feel certain things, to be open to certain things. So, and the difference between the two could be that zuhud is to leave things. Uh, that have no benefit to us on the Day of Judgment. And wara is to leave things that are harmful to us on the Day of Judgment. And, you know, Mashaykh have written that when it comes to wara, or Abab nas it is the, the last maqam of their zuhud. And so meaning zuhud develops into wara. And for a seeker, for a true murid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is really like the first maqam of it. They essentially start from this and then they move off and then move on. So this is the first maqam of Zuhad um, for a seeker, this concept of Allah. And we find that we are people who are careful and cautious when it comes to dunya. Okay? For example, um, when we are preparing for something, let's say you have an interview in the morning or you have to catch a flight, you always keep this buffer time. You you have to get there by 8 o'clock, the distance is 45 minutes. So, you know, but you you make sure that you have an hour, an hour 15. What is that? This is being cautious about. In Urdu, they call it ihtiyat being a muhtat person. And so this is something that we actually practice quite well when it comes to our dunya. And so this kind of ihtiyat is something that is required when it comes to the matters of deen. It is required. Now, whether we are cautious because we are worried, because we can have that, just like if you have an interview, you are worried about it, but that would really be, it is still water, but it is, let's say, of a different quality. Because right? that is still, the motivations behind it are very selfish in nature. I'm going to do ihtiyat because somebody might find out that I'm doing something ugly. ugly. Right? So, in one sense, it's water, but the motivations behind it is are, are very selfish in nature. Right? My self-image might get affected by it, what people think of me might get affected by it, so I'm going to stay away from certain things. Okay. Actually, this is the sort of thing that people who have the outer labada, outer cloak of religiousness or spirituality, they're very good at this. Okay. But you can naturally see that this kind of ihtiyat, if you know you don't progress from that, I mean, it's a good start but if you don't progress from it, it can easily lead to nifaq. Okay? Because we will keep on being cautious 
based on self motivation, be, you know, based on just worries about this person might see me, this person might see me. What will they think of me? What will they? How will they judge me if they find out? And you know, so it's a very different kind of caution. I mean, we should have it, but we shouldn't persist on it. We shouldn't stay in this hal. We should progress from that. That our caution and our care and our conscientiousness is based in the ta'aleem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Mashaikh actually said that it's not even the love, it's the ta'aleem because love without ta'aleem, you know, this um, majestic kind of um, presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it does not create the level of wara that is required. Love induces and produces different kind of kaifiyat. Maybe not that, you know, that ihtiyat and that care that we are really looking for in this hal. We need that azmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need that ta'aleem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, of course, if you have love and ta'aleem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is actually required, that creates the best kind, the most beautiful kind of wara that a person could hope for. Okay? So it's not just love. We need to remember, like we all always say that, Love and khawf, they are the you know, two faces of the same coin, two sides of the same coin. So, and, you know, so it's, it's very interesting to kind of understand this khawf and khashiyat and ta'zim and haybat and, that we have been speaking about. So ta'zim has to be coupled with that muhabbat. Right? Otherwise, people can become careless. Right? Just like we... I can give you an example. It's not. It's a myth, but it's not. Like, it doesn't obviously fit with Malikul Mulk. But for example, you know, usually for fathers we have taadi, right? So there's that care aspect there. Usually with mothers we had muhabbat, so people can become careless there. Hmm? They can do batamizi, they can do be just because you know, ammi. Hmm? This is ammi. Ammi will forgive us. Oh, it's just ammi. So you can see that there's a there's that laxness that comes with that really strong muhabbat that we should have and we do have with our mothers. Usually a father figure is, you know, comes with that a little bit of distance. We love our fathers, of course we do. But the tazim aspect is very ghalib there too. So, you know, usually some boundaries that we cross <laughs> with our mothers, right? You know, just go and we may not cross those boundaries with our father because of that sort of ta'zim. So I hope it's clear. Right? So ta'zim and muhabbat, with muhabbat, somebody who's qadr mutlaq and somebody who's malik al-mulk, who's khalik and malik, so it is required that we have that. And so when we say, you know, naturally it's very easy to understand, like what do we stay away from? What are we careful about? What are we cautious about? And of course the haram. Right? I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it goes without saying, of course, the haram. We have to stay away from that. But then also things that are that are shuhat, dubious. Right? So we have to stay away from that as well. You know, and you will see that there are very parallels between this. You know, like Vian diagrams between wara and taqwa as well. Kafiyat right? similar, but it's like um, you know, chocolate and dark chocolate. They're both chocolates, but different flavors. Um, and the third thing is also to stay away from, you know, excesses as well. Okay? So, you know, be cautious about that as well. You know, stay away from, from that as well. That's required. Okay? And Messiah have written that, you know, do an assessment. Do an assessment of what is ugly because we are looking for ihsan, which is excellence. Jamal, which is beauty. So we have to stay away from the opposite of it. Something that is not excellent, something that is ugly. Usually there are amal, there are circumstances, there are situations, there are halat, there are kafiyat. And we know it because it affects our heart. We know ugly situations. We know ugly, ugly, you know, without the ayn. We know the ugly amal. Right? We know the ugly kafiyat. We know the ugly khayalat. We know the ugly jazbat. So... 
we know it. We have a lifetime of experience staring at it. So we have to let go of it. That is at least like the first level that we should have. And the second is to really set some boundaries around ourselves that things that are harmless to us, we can stay within those boundaries. Because avoiding harm, right? That's the what up. So we know what's harmful to us. And again, this is, every person is different. You know, it's very idiosyncratic for you something else, for you something else, for you. Again, of course the haram. But those things that really affect our ta'alluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's, it's you know, different things because people have different nafus. Right? Some are very sharif with nafs, but they might be very lazy. <laughs> you know, some nafs gets easily you know, evoked, but you know, then strengths and weaknesses in, in every person. Okay? So we have to draw that boundary. I'm not going to put myself in the situation that will lead to harm. And the greatest harm is sin. In, in which, you know, we, we destroy with our own hands that God look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It just destroys, gets destroyed. It's like, you know, building like a house of cards or, you know, like Lego or something. And then, you know, like a domino just pull like one thing and that's it. It just falls down. And then you have to start again. You have to start again. So th that does happen. So it's important that we do that. But... You know, the third level would be, again, let's say if a person has attained certain level of spiritual maturity, then it becomes really that, you know, avoiding any kind of dispersion and distraction, you know, tafaraka. And again, you know, this is what the next month folks, the next Mondays will call, it, you know, that khalwat dar anjuman and attaining this level of yadashd and yadgaro and negadashd as well. All of this together, it's, you know, it's avoiding distraction. Right? So you can see parallels, right? Being described from, from this angle or we look at it from this angle. Right? All of these things are attaining those four things again. You know, you attain jamiyat, you attain huduri, meaning you avoid the opposite of it, distraction and dispersion and whatnot. Right? And that leads you to certain halat and maridat and whatnot, uh, which is, you know, what, what, what we hope for. That Allah Ta'ala does that, opens up our heart to the nisbah, to those specific, specific idea that we want to see within ourselves. Okay. So inshallah Ta'ala, we make niya and we make dua, because again, this is an ata of Allah Subh'ala. Everything is an ata of Allah Subh'ala. Allah Ta'ala makes us people of wara, makes us people of zuhd make us people of taqwa in reality, in haqiqa. Okay, in haqiqa. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through only his fadl and karam count us amongst those that he has forgiven. Amin ya rabbul alameen wa akhu ta'bana wa alhamdulillah. Shanda ta'ala. Do murat for a few minutes. For a few minutes. For a few minutes.